and who are tuning in on the live Facebook. Praise God. So we're doing a live radio and uh, airway and also doing a live, uh, praise God, Facebook. Uh, I get so often uh, people wondering uh, whether or not I'm a Caucasian or if I'm a black man. And uh, so obviously just know that I'm redeemed in the blood, praise God, of the Lamb. Amen, praise God, amen of God. And so praise the Lord. So again, we want to welcome you uh, again. Uh, praise God to the live uh, broadcasting. Hello to our Facebook folks. And uh, praise the Lord. Every day around this time, 1115, 1145, praise God, we're going to be doing both live Facebook and also um, here on the radio uh, broadcast as well, airwaves. Uh, and as well, we're on the uh, internet side of the uh, uh, KKAY. So that's the www.globalradiokkay.com. Praise God. Amen. You can go and you can download uh, the apps here for the radio station, be able to catch it on the internet as well. And uh, praise the Lord. So anyway, uh, again, let's get into the Word of God and uh, also, too, to our live Facebook followers. Those of you that do have Facebook, you'd like to come on board and uh, be a part of the Facebook family. Praise God Then you can go on and just plug in Andre Otis, and that should be able to get you to uh, the live uh, Facebook. And uh, so you can be able to both see uh, and hear the audio uh, through Facebook. And uh, those of you that's by way of radio, uh, praise God, you can plug it in your phone, Andre Otis, and uh, praise God, uh, should be seen here. But anyway, uh, Andre Otis, you should be able to come on the board and be able to watch, praise God, also the live uh, footage. Trust me, I'm not interested in people seeing me or not, not, nor hearing me. But praise God, we've, we've answered the call, so here we are. Praise the Lord. So anyway, um, let's go back to Luke, the ninth chapter, and we're dealing with this matter of our cross and Christ's cross and, uh, and showing how is it that the Messiah, the Master, the Creator, the Redeemer, uh, the Christ, Jesus, the Son of the living God, had noted in his ministry, in his teaching, that if any man would come after him, they must deny themselves, take up their cross. How is it that we have an instrument of capital punishment, amen, that's been placed upon us? What did we do? Amen. And yet it has nothing to do with what you did or what you didn't do. It's what you have inherited. Praise God. And, uh, and so I just want to read, just for Scripture's sake, uh, our, from our text, Luke 9, 22 and 9, 23. The Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be slain and be raised the third day. So we know that Christ is going to Calvary, and he is going to die on a Roman cross. And uh, praise God, and there be buried and, uh, and then rise again the third day, like Christ, like the believer. Amen. Like Christ, like, amen, those who have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, amen, concerning the Lord, praise God, Jesus Christ. And so then in the 23rd verse, if any man will come after me, let him deny, reject himself, and take up his cross daily, praise God, and follow, praise God, amen, me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall, praise God, shall save it. Everybody who refuses to take up that cross, that cursed cross, amen, by the law, and follow Christ and accompany him on his cross, praise God, there at Calvary, is seeking to save, amen, praise God, his life from being lost on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Praise God. So everyone that seeks to save his life is going to lose it. And so if you seek to, to not go to Calvary with your cross, then you're going to lose your soul. And that's what the master is saying there, because that cross sentence is going to follow you to the throne. And there you'll be cast into the lake of eternal flame. But understand now, praise God, you inherited sin and dead from Adam and the law cursed you. Amen. At the same time. And so then that's where the curse of the law 
is carried out through this means of the cross, not stones, but this means of the cross. You must come to an end, praise God, of what you are, because what you are is not what God created you to be. What you are, the Bible says that by uh, the first, by one man's disobedience, many, praise God, were made sinners. That's over in Romans, praise God, the fifth chapter, there in the verse, praise God, number uh, 19, Romans 5 and 19. It says, therefore, as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now, so by the obedience of Christ, which it speaks of his death, obedience of, unto death, even the death, praise God, of the cross, that Christ, why is Christ having to bear a sentence, a cross, amen, sentence, a curse sentence by the law, amen? Why is it that, why is that the case? He didn't sin. He had no sin, praise God. How is it then that Christ was to take up a cursed cross? Well, he's doing it, praise God, for you and for me. And this is where the Bible speaks of the so great love of God or the great love of God in this manner that Christ would come and take up that cursed cross because there was a cross prepared for you and I, a curse that was pronounced upon you and I by the Mosaic law because of the sin in which we inherited through the first man, Adam. Let me recover some verses of scripture, bring into your remembrance just a little bit. If you notice in Galatians, the second and the third chapter, but the script, 22nd verse, but the scripture concluded all under sin. So we, cap, we became under sin, amen, again, when the first man, Adam, entered under sin and dead by sin, dead passed upon us. Amen. For that all have sinned. When it speaks for that all have sinned, it's implying that what Adam did affected us. So then what Christ would come and do and dying on the cross to resolve that cursed sentence, which is that cross death and that sin issue that came in through the first man, Adam, Christ would resolve both. Amen. Sin by, and dead by sin and the cursed cross that was implemented by the law. He would resolve both of these. Praise God, precious Savior, for you and I, by going to the cross and dying under sin and under that cross, cursed death, praise God, for you and for I. Amen. To redeem us from both sin and the curse, praise God, of the law. Man, that was better, better explained than than trying to go through all the verses of scriptures, amen, to show you. But I want to bring you to the verses of scriptures, amen, to relate that, amen, to you, to be able to appreciate and, and to receive uh, just refreshing of that love of God, his first love to us, praise God, amen, in seeing what he did, praise God, for you, praise God, and for I. The cross is not, amen, praise God, to, to, uh, to forgive your sinning. The cross of Christ is not, amen, praise, give license to sinning. The cross of Christ is not, amen, for future sinning. The cross of Christ is for the end of sin and all the sin that comes out of sin. Amen, if that makes sense to you. Praise God. So uh, we, we're going to clarify that in just a minute. But once you notice, know the scripture had concluded, Galatians 3.22, all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them, praise God, amen, that believe in Jesus Christ. That's the whole implication there. To believe in Christ and to believe what he did and what he accomplished, praise God for us. So the 22nd verse says, all, amen, is concluded under sin, both Jew and Gentile. I want you to notice in verse number 13, uh, verse number 10 again in Galatians 3. And for as many as are of the works of the law, or under the curse. Now, what many people don't understand is, is that uh, if you were caught in an act of adultery or fornication or murder or whatever it was that you, that, that you was found guilty of by the Mosaic law, then you were taken out and stoned to death. Even if you dishonored Father, on any of those commandments, amen, if they caught you lusting, amen, then they would stone you, amen, praise God, amen, to death. The woman caught in the act of adultery, which is a totally misconceived, amen, uh, text that, that, that just blows my mind. 
The woman caught in the act of adultery brought to Jesus was not necessary to stone the woman, but it was to stone Jesus. If he answered anything contrary other than stoning that woman according to Moses' law, then they would have had means to accuse him. Read the text. That was the whole point of that, to accuse Christ of something to find him worthy of stoning. Amen. Praise God to death. But Christ was not going to die by way of stoning. Deuteronomy 21 is a prophecy also of how that Christ would be hanged on a tree. Cursed is everyone that hanging on a tree. And there hanging on that tree, his body would not be left on that tree all night. That was an implication for Christ. Amen. I believe it's a prophecy. I believe it's a foresight of what was going to happen to the creator. Amen. Everyone that hang it on the tree is a cursed. Amen of God. Now, God did not curse his son, but in that Christ died on the cross. Amen. He's identifying himself with the cursed death of that cross. Amen. Praise God by him hanging on that tree. But remember now, he has no sin nature or body of sin or body of death or the body of the sins of flesh that we inherited from Adam. The creator doesn't have that. So there's nothing for the law to curse him for. Amen. Praise God. There's nothing they could find. The Bible said they hated him without a cause. There are no just cause for Israel to take the Messiah and kneel him, praise God, amen, to the cross. Indeed, he was the Christ, the son of the living God, the one that they were looking for and expecting to come. And so then there were no, any false accusations they brought up. They were blind by law. They were blind by sin. They were blind by the devil because they refused to believe that indeed he was their Messiah. They saw with their eyes, heard with their ears, amen, and refused to comprehend, praise God, with their hearts. They shut their eyes, shut their ears, and hardened their hearts. And therefore the blindness of sin and darkness and Satan and religion blinded them to who Christ, amen, praise God, was in the flesh. Amen. Praise God. And so then because of all of those things, you see, people don't understand today. The moment you cease to believe this gospel, then that gives latitude for Satan to blind your mind. That gives latitude for anything else you're trusting in to blind your mind. Darkness to blind your mind. And sin to come back in if, in fact, you're one who believe and cease to believe. That gives sin the latitude to come back in while you are taken out of Christ by God. And that's got to be clear, too. You can't get into Christ except God. Amen. Praise God. Burp you into Christ. And the only way out of Christ, yes, unbelief, but the final one that takes you out of Christ is the Father. Jesus spoke that in John, the 15th chapter. Praise God. Every branch of me that don't bring full fruit, the Father takes it, praise God, out. And so this matter here is, this is a very delicate, delicate, amen, uh, uh, situation here. All right, so you're believing, and who you believe in, what you believe about Christ, amen, does make Praise God, a difference. It can result in a, in, a, in a good difference or it can result in a difference that's not good. Salvation or damnation. And depending on who you believe in, what you believe about him, and in light of what he came to do and that he did it. If in fact that you, that's what you believe, the true purpose that Christ came, then it's going to produce true results. Now, I want you to notice over here, so the cursing is everyone that's of the works of the law. So if the, the idea of the woman caught in the act of adultery, praise God, and the acts in the Lord, what we to do to her, Rabbi? And uh, Moses said to stone her. Well, you know, if Moses said to stone her, we didn't go stone her. Don't, don't come messing with Christ. Go on and do what Moses says. Amen. If you're followers of Moses, you want to keep the scriptures, you want to do what the scripture says do, then go on and do what Moses said. Well, the fulfillment of time, the fullness of time had come. That Messiah, he who was anointed, amen, by God. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that are bruised. Praise God and proclaim deliverance unto the captive. That's what he was anointed to do. 
Christ didn't come to take up stones, to stone those, for he has got caught an act of adultery, nor stone those who inherited, praise God, a sin root. That was not the intent that Christ came. And so finally he stands up. Ye that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. The implication was not necessarily you that's not out there committing adultery, your own self, let him cast the first stone. That's not what that text is about. If you live in filthy preacher, then you need to repent and believe the gospel. If you live in filthy layman of the church, then you need to repent and believe the gospel. You don't have no answer for nobody to give to nobody if you yourself is in bondage to sin. I don't care what your sin is. I mean, you're bound, you're in bondage bondage to, amen, that sin root, amen, so you, you, you have no answer to give to anybody, and so, but that's what's not the case with the Pharisees here, amen, they were not out doing the same things the woman was doing, amen, and that was the reason why, because they convicted now, because they was out doing something their own selves, no, the issue was, was this, they were convicted in their own conscience, because of the sin root, they too, was concluded under sin by the same scriptures they themselves were trusting in to damn other people with. Amen. Now, for civil purposes, for religious purposes, I mean, to have a control concerning of sin and sinners in a community, in a society. The law used lawfully is good for those intent and for those reasons, but that's not the answer to resolve the sin, amen, problem, to resolve the old man problem, amen. You resolve the old man, body of sin, body of debt problem, then you resolve the sinning problem. Amen. Praise God. Ain't no need to start taking a tree that's producing bad fruit to start cutting fruit off to try to save the tree. No, you take the root out. Amen. You cut the tree at the root. The axe led to the root of the tree. Uproot the whole tree. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you replant another one. Praise God. This, then, Amen. For good fruit. Amen. Then will come as a result of a good tree. Either make the tree good, its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt, and its fruit corrupt. Amen. A good tree ain't going to produce no evil fruit. A evil tree is not going to produce no good fruit. Bottom line, it don't work that way. Amen. For it don't work that way like, like people think it does. Amen. That you're a tree, you can have both good and bad fruit, whatever the case might be, on the same. Amen. Tree. And that's not the case. The tree good, its fruit good. The tree evil, it's fruit evil. And that's what the father does. Every tree he hadn't planted, he uproots it. Satan in the garden planted a corrupt tree through Adam disobedience. The root is corrupt. The tree is corrupt. And all the fruit is corrupt. Amen. And so then, so this matter had to be resolved. Every good of a, of, of, of a, of a man, I'm talking about natural stuff. Amen. Natural stuff. Amen. Let's say you're not stealing. And let's say you are. Amen. Praise God. Uh, praying for somebody. Amen. Necessarily. But the issue is, if that prayer is coming out of a sin root, amen, though that may be a good thing you're doing, but it's coming out of a sin root. So then even the good you're doing is still corrupt and evil because it's coming out of a sin body root. Now then, so then the scripture says, he said, you that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And they could not do it because they're convicted in their own heart. We're talking about the light of the world has shone on the darkness of their inward parts. Their sin root, body of sin is exposed. And now they can't stone her because if they got to stone her, then they got to stone themselves. Not because of something they were doing, but because it was under the same body of sin that that woman, amen, was under, though they were not doing the same things that that woman was doing. Now, listen to me closely, because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding, especially with the legalistical bunch. A lot of misunderstanding of what we're preaching concerning, amen, the gospel concerning the cross of Christ. Amen. But I always say, keep listening. One day, this light going to shine in your heart, and you're going to really, really hear logos. Praise God that this preacher is preaching on this radio broadcast. Listen to me closely. Praise God. Something was exposed in the heart of those men. So convicted 
by the presence of the creator, by the light of the Christ in that flesh body. They were so convicted in their heart because they were under the same sin that Adam, praise God, was under. And that thing is exposed. Now they have sinned. Rather than run from the Creator, run to Christ. Run to Him. Lord, save me. Save us from this body of sin. But no, what they did was they walked off. Amen. Amen. From the elder to the least and from the least to the elder. And the woman is standing there with Jesus. He looks at it and says, woman, where are you accused? Has any man accused thee? Others, have any man stoned you? Have any man stoned you? She said, no, Lord. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Now, she's not free from the body of sin. But she is liberated from the power of that body of sin. That that woman can go and not commit adultery ever again. But she still needs to be born again. Because that sin root has not been resolved yet until Christ went to that cross. And that's where, amen, that people need to understand. The every one that's of the works of the law is under the curse. And so then the Bible says this. In the verse number 10, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So we understand then, those who did broke the law were stoned. But those who didn't break the law were still under the curse of the law. But it wasn't going to be by way of stones. See, Jesus didn't say, if any man come after me, let him take up his stones. No, he didn't say that. He said, if any man come after me, let him take up his cross. Even those that were stoned to death, it didn't resolve the sin root problem. Amen. It just resolved the sinning problem. Amen. That's all the stones did. And so only the cross, amen, that Christ died upon, it resolves the body of sin problem, which resolves the sinning problem that comes out of the body of sin that's in the soul of individuals. So then this matter here then is, is this. So he said, take up your cross and follow me, but you've got to reject something. But you can't reject what you don't know what it is to reject. You can't deny what it is that you don't know that he's telling you to deny until you've been convicted of that sin body down in your soul. Amen. When you've been convicted, truly convicted of sin in your soul, I didn't say guilty because of something you did. I'm talking about guilty and ashamed of a sin root that's down in your soul. Convicted by the Holy Ghost. Praise God, amen, of God. And then you understand what it is you need to reject about you. Self. Let him deny himself. Amen. Sure, there's people that's got the willpower to deny sinning, but they don't, but they ain't not, never been convicted to deny the sin root. And so the sure, there are people that can go without committing act of sins. Surely you can go and keep all the commandments. But I guarantee you this one thing, that last one going to get you because you can't control the sin root in you from lusting. Bottom line, until that sin root is resolved in you, amen, until it's resolved, praise God, within the soul, amen, then that resolves, amen, the sin issue problem. All right now. So he tells us this, amen, praise God, being made a, uh, in the 13th verse. And so then, uh, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Now the evidence, amen, the evidence is evident that only the just, amen, shall live by faith. Well, how is a person meant to be just? How are you meant to be righteous? When the law said there's none righteous according to Romans the third chapter. How is a person made righteous? Amen. Who was a sinner? How could you convert a Saul of Tarshish? Amen. And make him to be a child of God. A man full of rage and hatred against Christ. Amen. Who became Jesus. Whom he despised and hated. Amen. How can you convince a man like that of salvation and he gets born again in a moment of time and three days later, his whole course, his whole purpose is now changed and he's preaching a faith that he once persecuted. Folks, that's what, that's what the Calvary, the Christ is the 
only one, when he appears to you, when you see him as he is, he's the only one that can make that difference down in the very core, amen, of who, um, who you are. Amen. And resolving that sin issue down within your soul. That's what happened, amen, to Saul of Tarshish. So he writes about it in his epistles. Everything about the Christ crucified, the blood of Jesus, the pure water of Christ, the body of Christ, the death of Christ, kneeling sin to the cross, Lord of the cross, old man to the cross, the devil's destroyed feet at the cross, the world crucified at the cross. Everything that the Apostle Paul starts writing him is everything. He don't take the course of saying he was justified by keeping commandments or keeping laws. No, he was justified but what Christ did, and by the blood that Christ shed on the cross of Calvary, took him and made him to be just, made him to be the righteousness of God, born of God, alive unto God, and Christ living down on the inside of his soul. That's Galatians 2 and 20. That's Galatians 2 and 20. I'm crucified with him, with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Then yet, then I, oh, I'm crucified. Why Saul got to die? Why Saul got to come to the cross of Christ? Why Saul had to be crucified with Christ? If keeping the laws and commandments and all of those things is a means of justification, why he had to be crucified with Christ? It's because what Saul was down in his soul, a sinner bound by the sin body or body of death or the old man or the body of sin, that thing needed to be kneeled to the cross of Christ. And this is where Christ, who went to Calvary's cross, amen, to bear that curse, amen. And the implication is, it wasn't just that we should die because of what Adam did, that we should be cursed with a cross because of what Adam did. So your creator, your Lord, Logos, came into the world and took on that cross, that cursed death of the cross, head on because of his love, for me, his love for you. He took that cross head on, that cursed that head on, and turned it on sin that was in our soul. That's justice. And to take us in his death with him, and thus in resurrection with him, quicken us together with him, and thus we made just by faith, we live unto God, praise God, hallelujah, alive, with Christ and Christ alive in us. Well, my time is up. God bless you. Turn on again at 1.30 to 2 o'clock. We'll see you then. God bless you.